Hi, my name is Ramon. I'm a cosmetic chemist, product developer, and esthetician. And today we are debunking sunscreen myths. This is Chem Q&A. So first question is, why do some sunscreens have white casts, others don't? And it's actually down to the ingredients themselves that protect from UV rays, the UV filters. So in sunscreen world, you got two types of UV filters. There's chemical and mineral. In science world, we call those organic versus inorganic. That just means that organic has carbon in the structure. Inorganic does not have carbon in the structure. And the sunscreens you are going to see those white casts from contain the mineral filters, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. And the reason for that is just that they are insoluble, white pigments. They do not dissolve in a solvent and therefore they're going to stay a white pigment. And due to that, there is a degree of refraction, AKA when the light hits it, you're going to see white as a result of that. And so any sunscreen that you generally see that has titanium dioxide or zinc oxide in it will have that. Chemical sunscreen filters are not going to give you white cast. Those are generally soluble. They will dissolve in a solvent and therefore be clear on the skin. But in recent years, there have been a few newly developed and launched chemical sunscreens that may lend themselves to a white cast. We're seeing those a lot more internationally in Asia in Europe, and those are things like Tinosorb M, Evasorb HEB, and Tinosorb A2B. The next misconception that we have is mineral sunscreens, they can go last in your skincare routine. Chemical sunscreens, they need to go first in your skincare because they have to react with your skin for them to work. This is a really common one. I do not know where this came from. So in the world of skincare, sunscreen needs to be the last step of your routine. The reason being is that a major component of sunscreens being able to work adequately and give you good protection is they have to form a film of protection on the skin. And so that's why we say sunscreens go last in your skincare routine. If you put them first in your skincare routine, so wash your face, sunscreen first, everything else on top, you risk disturbing that sunscreen film or the ability for sunscreen to even form a film in the first place. And therefore, you're not going to be able to get the SPF 50 that's on your sunscreen. You'd be surprised. Just the UV filters in the sunscreen alone will give you a certain portion of the SPF that the sunscreen tested for. But that film forming ability really does give you that actual full protection that you want from a sunscreen. And I feel like the misconception around chemical sunscreens people have heard is that it has to react with the proteins in the skin for it to function properly. This is also not true. We actually have ways of in vitro SPF testing where we can take both mineral and chemical sunscreens. We can apply them on a plastic plate and get very accurate SPF testing results from that. Therefore indicating you don't need to put them on human skin for them to even work in the first place. Your sunscreen filters are gonna work no matter what they're on. Next misconception or next question I should say is why do I need to reapply sunscreen every two hours? So as I mentioned, the film forming ability of a sunscreen is a very major component of it being to protect you adequately. You apply the sunscreen on your skin, it needs to set and that's actually why sunscreen say wait 15 minutes after you apply is so that the sunscreen is able to set and form that film of protection. With that two hour reapplication, the mentality is you're out and about, you're sweating, you're touching your face, things are happening that are causing that film to become disrupted. Basically think of it like Swiss cheese, you're developing little holes in your sunscreen protection. With reapplying every two hours, which is recommended if you are in prolonged UV exposure, what that's doing is just reinforcing that film, making sure you have a good film of protection on the skin. And that goes for daily wear and heavy duty sunscreens. Heavy duty sunscreens, basically think of it as the ones that say water and sweat resistant. Daily wear sunscreens, they aren't so heavy duty. They don't offer that extra water and sweat resistance. Therefore, with those, you really do have to be more diligent with application. Next question is, I put on sunscreen, why did I still tan and or get a sunburn? The T is two main points. Number one, for the most part, studies have been done that showcase that the general population does not put on enough sunscreen. When we test sunscreens in the lab, we use a very specific measurement, two milligrams per centimeter squared. So you're applying two milligrams of sunscreen per centimeter squared of exposed skin. For everyone, that's going to look a little bit different. You're going to see a lot of different rules for body, a full shot glass for face, roughly a quarter to a half teaspoon to ensure you're going to get the advertised SPF 30, 40, 50 that's on the sunscreen packaging. If you're not putting on that much, you're not getting that uniform film and therefore you're not getting the advertised protection. You have holes in your protection. You're going to get sunburn. You're going to tan. The second part is that sunscreens don't offer 100% UV protection. There is no firm block like 100% of the UV rays using just sunscreen. You have to consider other methods of sun protection. Therefore, that's also why you still tanned as well. So next misconception is a little sunscreen goes a long ways. And as I mentioned prior, that's not the case. Sunscreen is very much dosage dependent. Film forming ability of sunscreen is very important. In order for your sunscreen to be able to form that film of protection, basically think of your skin as a very uneven surface. You need the sunscreen to be able to form a level on top of those hills and those troughs. Therefore, you need to put on enough sunscreen. When we test 
best sunscreens in the lab. Again, we do two milligrams of sunscreen per exposed area of skin. For body, shot glass amount. For face, quarter to a half teaspoon. And in applying that much, which does sound like a lot, find a sunscreen texture that works well for your skin type in terms of applying that much. That's when you're gonna be able to get the advertised protection. You don't put on enough, you're not gonna get that SPF 50 that's on the bottle. You're getting like SPF 25, maybe 30 on a good day. I do have a video if you really care about figuring out how much sunscreen you should be applying for your face size. I'll have it up here in the card. It does explain how to measure your face and get a rough approximation of how much sunscreen you should be applying based on your face size. The next misconception is if your sunscreen gives you a white cast, just mix some pigment into it. That is one of the worst possible things you could do, especially if, again, you don't want to waste your money. You want to get the advertised protection on the sunscreen. If you start mixing pigments or foundations or liquid bronzer into your sunscreen product to affect the tint or shade of it, you are disrupting the sunscreen's ability to form an even film of protection on the skin. Again, film forming for sunscreen is very vital for adequate protection. You start mixing stuff up in there, it's not going to work the way it's designed to. You're going to affect the protection you're getting and therefore you're basically wasting your money because your sunscreen no longer works the way it's supposed to, you've diluted it. Next misconception is seed oils can give you SPF protection, therefore are great sunscreens. So with real sunscreens, when you formulate sunscreens, we are offering you a product that gives you broad spectrum protection. When you see broad spectrum, that designates that it gives you coverage in the UVB and UVA spectrum. With seed oils, the T is, yes, some have been tested and they show an SPF value, but it's negligible. We're talking single digits usually. And in order for you to really get the SPF that, again, the seed oils say, SPF 4 for let's pretend carrot oil, you need a lot of carrot seed oil to get that protection. And you don't wanna be putting on that much oil on your face because it's just not elegant. And that's a big thing when it comes to sunscreen formulation is you want really good protection. You want it to be very elegant because you want people to wear the sunscreen, wear enough of it and use it diligently, consistently. Could you imagine putting a quarter to a half teaspoon of just oil on your face? The next misconception is mineral sunscreens are better and safer because they are natural. Mineral filters are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide in your sunscreens. Can you go out and mine titanium dioxide and zinc oxide? Technically, yes, but that's not what you're finding in your sunscreen formulations, primarily because it's easier and cheaper to just synthetically acquire those materials, but also because uncoated zinc oxide and titanium dioxide are highly reactive and they're not safe for use in cosmetics. Zinc oxide and titanium dioxide as UV filters, they have to go through processing and coating to be able to be used in your cosmetics so that they can offer you adequate and safe UV protection. Therefore, there's nothing natural about them. These are processed chemicals. Everything is a chemical. Let's we'll start there. But they're not by any means natural. No one's going into their backyard getting zinc oxide and making a sunscreen with that. No one should be. Now, just because, again, they are chemicals, which everything is, and they do have to go through this synthetic processing does not mean they are bad for you either. That's just a mentality that needs to get broken. Next misconception on the same note is that DIY sunscreens are safer. And I'm here to tell you, DIY sunscreens are probably the most dangerous thing you can use. So when it comes to formulating mineral sunscreen with zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, as I mentioned earlier, those filters have to be coated. You're not just taking straight titanium dioxide, zinc oxide pigment. There's a special way that they need to be coated for safe UV absorption, but also they need to be adequately dispersed through the formula. There's special ways of doing so in both manufacturing and ingredient choice, but you need to make sure that no matter where in the sunscreen bottle you are in your mineral sunscreen, you have X percent of zinc and X percent of titanium, but they're not just settling to the bottom. Therefore, there's special ways you have to formulate mineral sunscreens. DIY sunscreen formulations just do not ensure that level of precision. And therefore, if you're putting on these products, you're most likely not getting any protection and therefore you're exposing yourself to the dangers of UV exposure. The next misconception is that chemical filters absorb while mineral filters form a physical barrier and block UV rays. As we know now, that is not the case. Both mineral filters and chemical UV filters work by absorbing, converting, and releasing the UV energy in the form of very minimal heat. With mineral filters, they do reflect a small percentage of the ultraviolet rays, but for the most part, they do function by absorption and releasing that energy. And the last question is, why are my sunscreens greasy? Most UV filters are either oil soluble or they need to be dispersed in a very emollient base or ingredient. Example being chemical filters, the soluble ones, they are not for the most part water soluble. They have to be dispersed and mixed into either oils, silicones, or esters for them to fully dissolve and be dispersed in the formulation. And on top of that, some of them themselves are 
really oily, really emollient. And considering the percentage some of them have to be used in formulations, you are considering a good amount of very emollient ingredients. Are there workarounds to this? For sure. You can use things like ethanol, AKA alcohol, which is very volatile, meaning it evaporates out, which allows your sunscreens to set and be a little bit more lightweight. You can use powder mattifiers, which help to absorb excess oil. But I always say, just find a sunscreen texture that works really well for you, either a gel, if you want something really, really lightweight or a gel cream, let it set, gently powder on top after it's set, and then you're gonna be matte. So that was Chem Q&A, where I debunked your sunscreen myths and misconceptions. If you have any questions about skincare, beauty, or makeup, feel free to leave those down in the comments below.